Hi, my name is Felix Kremer and today I'm going to explain to you how to load GDAL datasets into the Earth System Data Lab, Lab DataCube. We want to load all uh, datasets that are supported by GDAL into ESDL. We want to stack multiple TIFF files into a data cube. And then we are also going to look at how to concatenate different data cubes. Um, first, we're loading the relevant packages. These are ESDL, which is the um, backend of the um, Earth System Data Lab. Then YAX arrays, which handles the efficient um, mapping of functions on the data sets. Then we're going to use ArchGDAL as a Julia wrapper for the GDAL interface. And we're using dates to handle the um, date format and glob to search for files in the Linux file system. First, we want to select the input data. We're setting a directory where we have the files. This is now on my computer. And um, there's a bunch of TIFF files in this directory. And we're also setting a polarization that we're using to search um, different files in this directory. And then we're going to use glob to search for these um, files by setting this pattern. This star is, says, OK, take every character that is there. Then we're inserting the polarization string. And then we say, OK, this file needs to end with .tiff to make sure that we're only looking at TIFF files. And then we're applying this pattern on the input directory. And by doing that, we get a list of file names, um, in this case, 200, um, which we can then use to construct our data cube. Now we want to sort the input data by the acquisition date. First, we extract the timestamps. Then we sort them by uh, date. And then we apply the sorting on the dates and on the file names. Um, in our case, the file names have the structure like this. This is um, from the Pyrosa package and is normalized. So we know exactly that there's first the um, satellite name, then there's the acquisition mode, there's the orbit, then there's the date uh, string in this format of uh, year, month, day, and then the timestamp. And then there's some other uh, preliminary information. And we can write a function that uh, extracts this date from the file. And we're using regular expressions for that. So we construct a regular expression that takes eight times all different numbers. Then there must be the character t. And then there must be another six numbers. And this is exactly this pattern. And then we're also um, construct constructing a date format string that says, OK, I want a year with four digits, a month with two digits, a day with uh, two digits, and then also the same for the hour, month, minutes, and seconds. And then we apply this, and then we um, can construct this uh, dates um, vector where we get a date uh, for every file name. And we're applying this on the whole vector by using this little dot. This is called broadcasting. So we apply this function on every element of the file names vector. And um, we get then a vector of uh, date time objects, which have this which um, construct the meaning of the date. So um, we also get the same 200 elements. And then um, we can use the sort pump function to sort this by, by the date. Um, and then we get back the permutation that is needed to sort this vector into <coughs> these elements. In this case, this is not, not needed. But um, if you want to combine Sentinel-1A and Sentinel-1B, for example, you can have um, different sortings. And it's always better to, to do this to not rely on the sorting you get from the file system. And um, now we can apply this sorting on the dates and on the file names uh, vectors.
Now we want to make spatial mosaics of the single time steps. We group the images by the timestamp and then we generate temporary VLT files. We um, group the indices by the group times function, which is defined in the appendix. Um, it takes the sorted input uh, date vector and um, groups them if they're not if they're nearer than 200 seconds apart. And then we're constructing temporary paths to um, save our VRT files with the same um, base name as the input data and um, so that we can save the VRT files there. And um, then we construct a VRT file for every group. So we take the input files of this group and then we um, loop through the um, input files and then we um, read the data in ArchGDAL and then um, we construct a VRT file by this GDAL build VRT um, function and then we write the output to the temporary path and in the end we get the um, path groups this is this is the file names of all of the VRT files. We can scroll through this so we see that this is just we see this is just grouped by two images. So we see that the that for every time step there's two images that are um, mosaic together. This is just because of the overlay of Sentinel One that. You, the, the images get cut in the middle, and but the timestamps are so similar that they should be considered together. Um, now we can um, bundle all of this together into a data cube. So we load the VRTs that we constructed earlier for every timestamp. We com combine the VRTs into a whole data cube, and we use dates to handle the timestamps. So um, first we read all time um, pa temporary paths so that we get a GDAL data set for every um, single time step. And then we construct this by this unsafe GDAL build VRT and we say separate is true because um, we want to not mosaic them spatially, but we want to um, combine them temporally, so they are just laid on top of each other. And then we can construct a raster data set from uh, this uh, VRT file, and then we, we get this. So we get a GDAL data set with um, 100 elements, um, a data set with the widths and the heights of these number of pixels, and you also see the um, element type of the different bands. And now we want to construct a cube from that. So um, we also construct the grouped dates. So here we apply the group on the sorted date vector. And then we can construct a time axis for the data cube. So we just say, OK, this is a range axis. And this is the, the name of the axis. And this is the, these are the elements. So this is the uh, first uh, timestamp of the of the group, and then um, we construct a cube by applying this yux array type on this um, VRT um, or this GDA data set we um, constructed earlier, and um, this is then taken care of in the background. And um, then we can just rename this band axis into, a, into our time axis. Now we can combine all of these um, steps we did earlier into a single function, which is also defined in the appendix. And here we just um, say, OK, we want to use this input directory, and we would want to use this as the um, polarization string that is used in the uh, search for file names. And then by applying this, we get a data cube with a y dimension, an x dimension, and a time dimension. And this is the same size as the VH uh, cube we constructed earlier. 
And now we can combine these um, different cubes into one single larger, uh, larger cube by um, concatenating them. So first we define a categorical axis with the name of polarization and the elements VH and VV. And then we concatenate them by um, this concatenate cubes function, which is provided by Yux arrays. And here we have a vector of cubes, which must have the same size and the same uh, dimensions. And then we concatenate them along this cut axis. And so we get a cube, which is the, the same size in y, x, and time as the previous cubes, but which also has a polarization axis. And um, this cube can then be used for further analysis. And now, um, if you want to um, use this data cube for further analysis, you also want to save it. Um, we can save these cubes as a tar file. So we have, and we can also use different chunks depending on the analysis. So you want to align the chunks that are on disk with the analysis you want to do. So if you want to do mostly time series analysis, you want to have um, the fastest index in the time dimension, or you want to have to want to load all elements along one time axis at the same time. But if you want to apply um, spatial analysis, you rather want to have your chunks so that you have um, them larger in the spatial dimension and not so many time steps. Um, so this is something you need to consider depending on your further analysis. And here we can just say, okay, I want to save the cube. We, we can use the, the full cube here. I'm just using a subset of the cube to not uh, save so much. And then um, you provide a output um, path where you want to save the cube. And then we want to overwrite it. And then you can define your chunks. Um, so here I'm chunking 30 by 30 spatially and the whole time axis and the whole polarization axis. To wrap it, wrap it up, um, we just learned how to load all data that is supported by JIDA. So this is this was on the example of TIFF files, but you could also use um, everything that is um, has a driver in JIDA. Um, we combine single um, multiple files into a single data cube, and we save this as a tar file for further analysis. And now enjoy your data cube and start analyzing. 